Hi everyone and welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and in this video I'm going to be engraving and cutting this black piece of acrylic using the X-Tool D1 laser machine. Welcome back. Working with acrylic as a media with our laser machines is a very fun way to create projects. Before I start with the materials list, I have two very important safety things. The first one is being read and understand the manual that comes with your laser machine to operate it safely. And the second is because we are working with acrylic, when we engrave acrylic, when we cut through it, it releases toxic and poisonous fumes to our lungs. And that's really bad. So to mitigate that, we wanna make sure that we exhaust any fumes off of our project outside of our work area. With that quick safety announcement complete, it's time to start with the materials list for this project. I'm gonna breeze through this rather quickly, but to start out with, I like to make sure that my workspace is clean and clear of any debris. I have that already. So I'm going to start out with a piece of aluminum sheet metal. This comes with any honeycomb kit. Mine, I have a piece of blue painter's tape to either side to keep that piece of sheet metal from shifting around. If you don't have an aluminum sheet metal piece, you can substitute aluminum foil. I recommend using the heavy duty version. Simply draw out a long length of that aluminum foil, fold it in half once, with the dull side facing up towards the laser module. And once again, using some blue painter's tape to hold the aluminum foil in place. Next up is a piece of honeycomb. And this is very important that we want some type of an air gap underneath our work material. And again, if you do not have honeycomb, you can substitute some coins underneath. I like to use nickels or pennies and what we're looking for is just an air gap between our piece of acrylic and our work surface and some nickels or pennies will do that perfectly. Next up is going to be my laser machine. And for this video, I'm using the X-Tool D1 laser machine featuring the 10 watt laser module. This is the non-pro version of the D1. And because we are cutting acrylic and we are engraving, we do need to have an air assist. So for that, I have the X-Tool air assist kit. I have the air hose disconnected right now, but this is going to be a required piece of equipment. The next item is the vent fan that we saw during the safety announcement before. I'm going to set this off to the side and to cap all of this off, to capture all of those dangerous fumes coming off of the acrylic, I have this enclosure. And this will fit very nicely over the X-Tool D1 laser machine. And the last piece of material in the start of the show is this. It's black, glossy, cast acrylic that is about 1 8 of an inch thick. I'm not going to bore you with all of the technical jibber jabber on all of the components, but if you'd like to check that out, I will have product links in the description down below. Please feel free to bookmark any of those links for future reference. Next, join me in Lightburn. I'm going to do a simple design where we're going to be doing, of course, engraving and then cutting. We're gonna set all of that up in Lightburn and make something cool that's also simple and doesn't take a lot of time to make. Welcome to Lightburn. The first thing I wanna do is draw a box that is the size of the piece of acrylic I have, and I'm going to put that on a tool layer, and I'm going to just draw a random size box. I'll zoom in a little bit, and up here on the dimensions, I'm going to make sure that the padlock is unlocked so I can adjust the width separate from the height and my piece of acrylic is 90 millimeters wide by 65 millimeters in height. Now I know that whatever I make as a design needs to fit inside of this box. I'm going to click the text layer and we're going to make some text that says, happy birthday. And I'm gonna keep these 
the spacing between the two a little bit separated. And I'm going to highlight both of them and I'm going to put them on tool layer number five. I'm going to zoom in and this is what I want to have as an engraving. So I'm going to set that to fill right now. The next thing I'd like to do is I want to do a cut outline of this. And for that, I'll highlight the first word and make an outline. And I want to make that a little bit larger, something like that. And I want to do just the outer shapes only. And that all looks good. I'm going to select the birthday and just do the same thing. And it still has that same offset distance. Select just the outlines that we made. And I'm going to put both of those on tool layer number six. Now let me adjust the screen now by selecting this both the outline and the engraving, I am going to move this up until just that one layer starts to overlap just a little bit. And this looks good. What I'm looking for is a number of little spots where I'm going to be connected and maybe I'll make an adjustment a little bit. If you find that your mouse is snapping around on the screen, you can press and hold the control key and you'll get this nice smooth adjustments that you can make. So I like the way that this looks. And what I'm looking for is this overlap area of that blue. I'm going to click off to the side and I'm going to put my mouse on that blue number six layer and press and hold shift. And that will select just that one layer. And I'm going to go over here to weld all selected shapes together. And that is going to get rid of any of those overlapping areas. So now this is what's going to hold all of this together. And I'm going to highlight everything there. And I'm going to move this up to this box that we drew at the very beginning. And I know that I can make this as large as I want to, as long as it fits inside within reason. And here I'm outside just a little bit. So I'll shrink that down just a little bit with a little bit of uh, safety room around the outside. Now, if I'd like to make something a little bit more on this, maybe I'd like to make this as a cupcake topper. I will take this circle and making sure that I'm on tool layer number six, I will draw an oval and I'm going to move that up into the workpiece, something like that. And once again, I'm going to have that selected and select this other outline. And we can use this tool again. And now we have this nice bulge down at the bottom. And I'm going to click on create polygon. And I just draw a random shape for now. And I want to go over to shape properties over here. If you do not have that, you can go over to window and scroll down until you see, uh, let me see where I've got it here. Shape properties, make sure that that is selected and you'll have this little tab that shows up. And right now we have six sides. I wanna make a pointy triangle with three sides. And I'm going to just rotate this around. So it points straight down. I'm going to move that up just a little bit. And I don't like how sharp the point is on that. So I'm going to come down here to the radius and let's put a radius of, let's say one millimeter should be all that we really need. And we'll see that when I scroll in with this tool selected, when I move my mouse over a point that it can affect, it will change into a little tiny cross here. So now I can click on just that one. That's all I need to do for now. I'll reselect the cursor. And again, I'm going to select the outline of the happy birthday. And with all of that selected, we're going to weld all of that together. So now I've got this nice little point that we can stick down into the cupcake. And once again, this all fits safely inside of this tool layer. And let's navigate over to cuts and we'll see that my fill layer of this orange is set at a speed of 100 millimeters per second at a max power of 60%. If I double click that, 
we'll see that I have crosshatch on, over scanning is on, and my lines per inch is 200. We don't need a very high line density for this. And we'll also see at the very top here, I do have constant power mode is on. Moving on to the cut uh, number six layer here that I have set up. I'm going to be cutting at a speed of three millimeters per second. And don't worry, I'll put the uh, conversion for millimeters per minute for those of you who still like to use that. Um, I have a max power of 100%. And I'm going to do this in two passes. Inside of our enclosure here, normally I put my work material somewhere around the middle. It just gives me a lot of area to work around, literally some elbow room. But because we are working with this acrylic and I do want to evacuate the fumes off of this acrylic as soon as possible, I'm going to place my work material over in this corner where my exhaust vent is located. Now in placing my work material down, I always like to make sure that my material is squared up against the frame of the machine. And to do that, I like to grab an old project board, making sure that it's straight and flat. And I'll place that board against the frame, making sure it's nice and flat. And I'll just move that board until it touches the honeycomb. And I'll slide my work material up to that board, remove the board. And now I know my piece of acrylic is perfectly squared up against the frame of the machine. And this is where having this magnetic honeycomb from X-Tool really comes into play. I'm gonna build this little magnetic playpen, if you will, around that piece of acrylic. And that will keep it locked in place. The last thing I wanna do before leaving the work bed area here is I do wanna check the focus. I'll flip down the little lever on the laser module and we'll see that I do have the focus of the laser module perfectly set. And before we left that light burn software, we checked where the start origin point is and it's in this upper left hand corner. So I will move the crosshairs to that point right now Everything is all set. The only thing that's left to do is to hit the start button. Project is complete. Let's take a look at this and make sure that everything cut out completely. And just with a little pop out, this comes out very cleanly and I love the way this looks. We've got the acrylic on this uh, white background paper towel and we can see that it cut out all these little intricate shapes in the middle, nice and clean. I find that on the engraving, it's all clean and crisp. And I love the color of this off-white almond engraving against the shiny black color. It really makes this little cupcake topper really pop out. Hi, I'd like to break in for a quick second and let you know that while I was filming this project with the enclosure that I did not detect any of the acrylic fumes. And that's just how your enclosure should be too. While you're working with acrylic, you should not be able to detect any of those fumes within your work area. I had a lot of fun creating this cake topper out of acrylic. This project was fast and easy, and this looks great on top of this muffin. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, or ringing that notification bell. Doing any number of those things really helps me out it helps the channel grow, and it's a great way to connect content like this with great viewers like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.